If you've seen the new Dune movie, you may have been told by a mega fan about where the story ends up. The Emperor turns into a sandworm. In this video, we'll explain this God Emperor of Dune, the main character of Frank Herbert's fourth novel in his groundbreaking Dune series. We'll explore the intricate details of the story, its characters, and why he turned into a sandworm in the first place. Focused 3,500 years after the legendary rule of Paul Atreides, Frank Herbert's God Emperor of Dune shifts the narrative to his son, Leto II. Leto is not just a ruler, he's a visionary with a mission to ensure humanity's survival through a mysterious and arduous journey known as the Golden Path. His reign is marked by an iron grip over the universe, a testament to his extraordinary prescient abilities that guide him along this path. The most startling change in this era is Leto's transformation into a human-sandworm hybrid. This metamorphosis is both a symbol of his commitment to the Golden Path and a physical manifestation of his unique place in the universe. It grants him longevity and a connection to the sandworms of Arrakis, making him a formidable force in the galaxy. After the death of Chani, Leto and his twin sister Ganima are born into a universe brimming with political machinations. Raised by their aunt Aaliyah, who struggles with possession by other consciousnesses, they're soon under the watchful eye of their grandmother, Lady Jessica. Jessica recognizes their potential and the danger they're in, taking measures to shield them from the political storms. Leto and Ganima escape an assassination attempt by House Carino, forcing the two to split up, with Leto slipping into almost total anonymity. As Leto grows, so does his understanding of the Golden Path, his father's legacy, and the future he must secure. His prescient vision allows him to build power discreetly, amassing knowledge and allies while keeping his true intentions hidden from the universe. If you're wondering what the Golden Path is, well, it's a lot of things. For now, just think of it as the path that sets humanity on a course that doesn't lead to its extinction. After spending time amongst a variety of fringe Fremen elements, Leto accepted sand trout upon his body and began the conversion into a human sandworm hybrid. This transformation, which in the beginning was essentially a form of exoskeleton, boosted Leto's strength, reflexes, and speed immensely, and he was able to move across large distances on foot. This transformation also provides him protection from mature sandworms, who mistake his sand trout covered body for a lethal mass of water. He calls it a living, self-repairing still suit of a sand trout membrane, and soon notes that he is no longer human. You might be wondering though, why become a sandworm? Well, after coming to a greater understanding of the Golden Path, Leto realizes that the only way to save humanity is to become a bane for all humanity to hate and rise against. So, he fuses with the sandworms and becomes a giant, immortal, phallic-looking sandworm man. After his transformation had progressed to a sufficient stage, Leto emerged from the desert and returned to the city of Arakeen to confront his aunt Aaliyah, possessed by the spirit of the late Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Weird, I know. And claimed the throne of the Empire. After Aaliyah managed to briefly overcome her possession and take her own life, Leto claimed the title of Padishah God Emperor and promptly married his sister Ganima to consolidate his leadership. Again, I know, weird. By the time of the fourth novel God Emperor of Dune, 3,500 years had passed, and Leto had become almost entirely invulnerable to physical damage. Only his face was susceptible to injury, and his single greatest weakness that he shares with the sandworms, an intense vulnerability to water, was a secret. Except for Leto, the sandworms are extinct by this time, and all that's left of the ocean without water is a desert preserve set aside for Leto alone. This remnant is called the Sarir and is about the size of California. The old institutions, the Bene Gesserit, the Spacing Guild, the House's Major and Minor, the Landsrad, the Technocrats of Ix and Chome have all faded from power in the face of Leto's hydraulic despotism. Since he has absolute control of the spice on which the whole universe depends, he has the universe in the palm of his hand and ruthlessly enforces his simplicity order. Leto's reliance on the Gola of Duncan Idaho is a recurring theme in the series. He orders a new Gola for protection and guidance, a move that symbolizes the blending of past and future. Duncan serves as a confidant, protector, and a link to humanity for the increasingly isolated God Emperor Leto II. In a controversial move as Emperor, Leto suppresses the Mentats and bans their training. This decision is rooted in his desire to control the flow of knowledge and power, ensuring that his vision for the future remains unchallenged. It's a reflection of his absolute authority and the lengths he will go to maintain it. Over centuries, Leto's empire grows vast and powerful, a testament to his strategic genius and the fear he instills in those who would oppose him. His rule is characterized by both with awe and terror as he shapes the universe according to his grand design. For a while, Ganema provided her brother with guidance on the formation of the Golden Path. However, as they approached Fremen adulthood, Leto began to conceal aspects of the path from Ganema, primarily for her own protection. Leto knew that if he were to reveal the full extent of the Golden Path, that out of love for her brother, Ganema might try to prevent him from making it a reality. Eventually, as Ganema aged though, she passed away. The loss of Ganema leaves Leto heartbroken and alone, 
a reminder that even a being as powerful as the God Emperor cannot escape the pain of personal loss. Her death signifies a turning point in Leto's rule, as he becomes more introspective and focused on his ultimate goals. Leto establishes an all-female army known as the Fish Speakers to enforce his will across the universe. This elite force is fiercely loyal to Leto, serving as both protectors and enforcers of his divine rule. They're a symbol of his unorthodox approach to power and governance. Leto is ruthless with those who distort his story, punishing historians who lie about him. This reflects his obsession with legacy and the truth, as he seeks to control not only the present, but also the narrative of the past and future. The Bene Tleilax, a secretive and manipulative society, see Leto as a threat to their own ambitions. Their repeated attempts to assassinate him underscore the danger he poses to established powers. Yet Leto foresees his own death and meticulously plans for the world that will come after him. Leto's unexpected romance with the Ixian ambassador Hui Nori introduces a new dimension to his character. Yes, she fell in love with a worm. Their planned marriage stirs political unrest as it represents a shift in Leto's focus and priorities causing ripples throughout his empire. Siona, a key figure in the resistance against Leto, orchestrates his assassination. Leto had actually continued the Bene Gesserit breeding program that would lead to the birth of Siona, as he saw it as a part of the Golden Path. Leto eventually lost his life when Siona ordered the bridge he was crossing to be cut by a laser gun by her assistant Nayla. He fell to his death in the Idaho River, named after his confidant, Duncan Idaho. This act brings an end to Leto's millennia-long rule, but it also triggers the release of Sand Trout and the reversion of Arrakis to its desert state which had become the Fremen dream of a lush paradise during his rule. It's a moment of both liberation and uncertainty for the universe. In death, Leto's impact on the universe is profound. He's both revered and reviled, seen as a god by some and a tyrant by others. Over the next 1500 years, many important events took place. This included the famine times, the scattering, and the recreation of the sandworms on Arrakis, which emerged from the sand trout that escaped from Leto's body when he fell into the water. His religion persists on the planet Arrakis, and it's believed that his consciousness lives on within the sandworms, a final enigmatic gift to the people of Dune. Centuries later, Shiena Brug, who was a direct descendant of Siona and Duncan Idaho, and later become the youngest ever reverend mother of the Bene Gesserit, showed the ability to control sandworms, hinting at the lasting influence of Leto's reign. It suggests that the God Emperor's presence is still felt, shaping the destiny of humanity in ways that are yet to be fully understood. And there's everything you need to know about the God Emperor of Dune. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time.